the Arizona Signal Watcher DXing video blog. Episode 15, 6 meter Yagi Mark II, One Less Element. So in this video, instead of going into great detail on an antenna build, I'm just going to give an overview. Previously I did a three part series on a four element 6 meter Yagi with some interesting design features. I used that antenna for a while, but I wanted to try something a little simpler and maybe even easier to build. This time I just went with three elements on a shorter beam. I also optimized it for the low end of the 6 meter band, as opposed to the entire band. One of the main reasons to add the fourth element before was to give broader frequency coverage, but I'm only working uh, sideband and digital modes on 6 meters. In this design I have three foot sections of one half inch aluminum tubing permanently attached to the boom, and I slide 3 8 inch sections of tubing on either side to produce the proper total lengths of the elements. So here we can see the details. With the reflector as the zero position, the driven element is 2 feet 3 and a half inches in front, and the director is 5 feet 3 inches in front. Now I'm going to, uh, I'll give the metric units here in a moment, but here in the United States materials are generally sold in uh, U.S. customary units, so that's what I'm going to primarily use here. So here we see the, the uh, half inch diameter sections and they go from minus one and a half feet to plus one and a half feet, three feet long. And then the three eighths inch sections on either side of the main part of the element. So here the reflector goes from one foot six inches out to five feet 1.6 inches. And so the difference between those is three feet seven and a half inches. And so that's how much extra three eighths inch tubing needs to stick out on either side. Now the actual piece should be cut longer, typically maybe six inches longer or so, um, so that there's overlap between the two tubes to make it uh, a little sturdier and that'll make it uh, so it maybe doesn't sag quite as much. And similarly, the with the um, driven element, um, that extends uh, 3 feet 2.3 inches on either side and the director 2 feet nine and a half inches on either side. Now just for reference, here is the SWR for this antenna and it's around 1.4 uh, in the model um, around the low end of the 6 meter band. Now we'll take a look later um, looking at the model on either side and we'll see how it uh, how it peaks here in the, at the low end but it increases uh, quite a bit uh, once you get away from that. The azimuthal pattern, this is at 5 degrees in elevation uh, which is a common uh, angle uh, for sporadic E for long distance ionospheric bounce. Um, here's the minus 20 ring. We see that uh, in this range here from 50.0 to 50.4 the uh, front to back is in excess of 20 decibels and so we've got a nice uh, good theoretical pattern here. The elevation plot the main lobe here peaks at about 13 degrees. Ideally, you know, we'd like that to peak maybe a little bit lower, but there's still quite a bit of power uh, going out uh, even down, say, to five, uh, five degrees or so. And there's also another higher lobe, um, and that's just something it's just hard to, uh, hard to get, a, get around uh, having that. Um, here for this model, I have this at 6.3 meters, that's kind of arbitrary, but 20 feet or so is a, is a typical height. I can get um, my antenna a little bit higher, um, but that's a, that's a fairly typical height that I, would, uh, that I would use. And the height of the antenna above the ground will affect um, the height and strength of these lobes. And now the metric dimensions. So let's look at some construction details. So here is the feed point of the antenna. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. So I've got the uh, SO239 uh, socket here. And the uh, two sides of the feed point are here and here. And so we'll flip that over in a moment and take a look at that. But the um, uh, what's supporting 
the uh, SO239 socket um, is the one of the feed points here. There's a machine screw through there, and then that's attached here. And there's a, a spacer in here just to uh, be able to, to get that lift that up so there's room underneath. And then the other side here is supported um, by uh, some more spacing hardware, some more nylon hardware there. Uh, and that also uh, goes through to the other side. And then we have uh, uh, we have a wire here soldered to the um, uh, to the center connector in there, and that's attached over here. So there's the two sides of the feed point. Okay, so let's look at the top side of the antenna. So uh, here we have um, that's the uh, one of the connection points holding up the uh, SO239 connector, and the other is here at the uh, feed point. There's the other half of the feed point. You can see uh, that uh, I have this uh, machine screw going through the element. There is a nut on the bottom of the element to, to make contact, and then there's a nut here to hold it in place. And it's the same on both sides. Now, uh, here, uh, the antenna supports, I didn't need, I didn't really need the full support here. So I just have the bottom halves of the uh, uh, of this uh, antenna clamp, and I'll show you that in a little more detail. Um, and so that's uh, attached here, so that holds this antenna, the two antenna clamps in, in place. And and there we have uh, the uh, top of the feed point. So here is the uh, reflector element, the center line. Um, basically, I had the uh, uh, I got things a little. Uh, off center with the uh, at the feed point when I put this together, and so I'm offsetting the uh, elements a little bit from center as well. But here are the element clamps, and so these clamp around the uh, element, and then they uh, I have nylon hardware here to attach them through uh, the board. So this provides a very secure attachment to the board. I use two here just to make that attachment even better and to make it so that the antenna couldn't move um, back and forth very much. I have to worry about that a little bit on the driven element just because there's only room to have one connector on each side, but that's something that's uh, easy enough to deal with. Uh, I put a couple coats of uh, polyurethane, actually three coats of polyurethane on here to make it a little bit water resistant. And so that means it can should be able to withstand uh, the weather a little better and here uh, is the end of the uh, three-foot section here. I've got a little uh, hose clamp on here and a uh, slotted end here. So the three-eighths inch tubing slides in here and then tighten that down uh, when it's fully deployed. So the idea here is I put this up on, the, on my antenna mast when it's uh, telescoped all the way down, put this on, slide the elements in, tighten those up, and then I can lift the... Uh, uh, lift the antenna up uh, to its uh, normal operating height. So here's the entire uh, antenna skeleton, if you will, from front of the antenna down to back. And this is the bottom of the antenna. There's the uh, uh, attachment to the mast. Basically, I have this uh, this wooden block with a hole drilled in it and a small section of the uh, one and a quarter inch fiberglass um, tube, and then that slides into the uh, uh, one and a half inch tubing at the top of the uh, telescoping or telescopic antenna mast. And so here's the uh, top surface of the antenna from the front of the antenna through the driven element and then the reflector. Okay, so let's run the uh, VNA on this. Okay, there's our peak um, near 50 megahertz. And so let me zoom in on that area. Okay, there we go. We've got a peak right, actually this is just over 50. This is almost perfect. And basically what the uh, modeling said. Yeah, so there's 50.0 and 50.5, and so yeah, we've got an SWR uh, 
basically across the uh, uh, CW and SSB parts of the band below 1.3. Okay, so here's the model uh, for this antenna. So uh, this is uh, from 48 to 52 megahertz. That's rough. So roughly the uh, then this this line up here is um, uh, uh, SWR three to one. So roughly from 48 to about I'll oh, say 51.7 or so uh, is the range. Now let me go up here to the actual measurements. Now I know this is kind of hard to read. This is 48 and that has an SWR of 2. So the SWR is a little lower and the antenna is a little broader than the model. Uh, I'm going to tentatively say that this uh, the antenna here is okay. And uh, so again this is just a um, maybe a more streamlined uh, version of uh, Yagi built a little bit better. Only three elements but that makes it a little bit smaller. Makes it a little more nimble to put up and take down and uh, made some other adjustments that uh, um, should make it uh, work a little better.